holding hey in the base. Hey in the base, and we're holding. We just did a kalbachimer. It's the line starts din, ini din, starts din. We're at the end of the line, ma, malachatza. So what happened here? Is we're talking about lechia boilet midifani shomavi. We have a mavi which is an alleyway, and we have a the, the opening at the end of the alleyway is partially closed off because not because you put a lechi there. A lechi is the post, but because that's the way you built it. So it wasn't put there in order to be matter it. To, to be to allow you to carry. And that should be fine because it's called the Lechi Ayim Meila. If a Lechi is there on its own, that should work. That's in Machlekes later on, Abaya and Rava. It's one of the Yal Kagams, the Basta Lech One of the, those uh, six rules that you go Lech Abaya. The only problem here is that if that Lechi was for Amas, then it's considered like a separate Mavi. And for the other Mavi, which is entirely open, we don't have any Lachi. Let me see. Chaim recommended. Let me get a screen share. Let's do this. Here we have a Lachi Haboilet. Do you see that? Is my um, the cursor clear? So up here is a Lachi Haboilet, this wall right there. So the rule was that you needed to put another Lachi somewhere else. Because if this was for Amas, this lechi, then that would not be, cons- that, this would divide the mavi in half. There'd be one mavi there and another mavi here without a lechi. So we said that you have to put a, another lechi somewhere, either over there or over here. Or over there. We, show we had different uh, ways of doing this. Let's see. Okay. That's what we're holding right now. So the Gemara says, that, that Rav Huna Braid Rav Yeshua says that if the entire Mavi was only seven Amas wide, seven Amas wide, then even though that Lechi was four Amas, it's not really a Lechi, it's a, it's a, a wall of four Amas, so I don't need another lechi. Why? Because it's another rule of oimid merubal aparutz. There's more wall, oimid means standing, standing wall, than parutz, than open area. So there's a rule by a chatzar that if a courtyard has an opening in it, so it doesn't need a lechi and all of that. Since the majority of the wall is closed, it's just a little opening. It's a little opening. That little opening is fine as long as it's not ten amas. But if the majority is closed, then it's fine. It's like a doorway. So I made merubala part should work. So it comes along Rav Huna Brith and says this that we said before in this statement of Rami Bar Chama, name of Rav Huna, that you need a separate lechi, even though you have a closed off, uh, halfway closed off mavi. That's only if it's literally halfway. But if it's closed off of more than halfway because it's only, the whole thing is only seven amas. So then it's majority closed off, and we'll learn a Kalvachimer from Chatzar, that, that it should work. Now, the Kalvachimer from Chatzar went like this, that in order to close off a Chatzar, if, the, if, a, if I have a courtyard, Chatzar is a courtyard, if I have a courtyard that one wall is open, so I need a little bit more than what a, what a Mavi would require if one wall is open. Mavi is the alleyway. And we've been learning since the beginning of the Masechta that an alleyway would be permitted with either one crossbeam or one um, post on the, along, along the side. By a chatzar, I have, a, it's a little bit more strict. By a chatzar, if one wall is open, then I would need two posts on the side. A post on, on, on both sides. So a chatzar doesn't have the leniencies of a Mavi. But nevertheless, a chatzar has a rule of oimid merubala parts. If there's more wall than opening, it's permissible. So the kavachim goes like this. If a chatzar 
that doesn't have all the leniencies of a Mavi, but nevertheless it has a leniency of Ayman Rivala part should be considered closing off the wall. So a Mavi that has a leniency, that it only requires one Lachi, for sure should have the leniency of Ayman Rivala part. That's a Kalvachayma. So the Gemara says like this, one second, the only way you can get out this Kalvachayma, that you can get this Kalvachayma to work, is if you say that a Chatzah doesn't have a lot of leniencies, but nevertheless it has this one. We're going to show you right now that a chatzar has certain leniencies that a mavi doesn't have. So the fact that it has a leniency of aimet merubal aparitz doesn't really tell me that that should also fit by a mavi because maybe that's because of its own leniencies that this works. So it's like this malachatzer. That's where we're starting. It's a little under halfway down. Malachatzer. Whereas for a chatzar, she came pitzasa be'aser. Tem mavi she pitzasa barba. A chatzar could be opened ten amas, but a mava can only be opened four tefachim. This is a, a, a bit of an issue. How, what does this mean? Uh, we learned in the Mishnah it could be open uh, ten amas as well. A mava, what is going on here? We're going to see on the next page what the story is with this. Um, we'll learn it more carefully in, in, the, in, in the vav. But the concept over here is is we're bringing out that Chatzar has a leniency that is not in Mavi. And therefore, Aymed Mirubal Aparats, more wall, majority wall, than open, than gaps in the wall, should work. Now, what is this concept of four Tvachim at the entranceway of a Mavi, that if it's four Tvachim, you have a problem? So Rashi is going to explain it on the next page that it works like this. That the Mishnah said that the opening at the entranceway of a Mavi can only be 10 amas. Anything more than 10 amas, you have to start to close it off to make the gap 10 amas or less. If it's more than 10 amas, there's a problem. So you have to build um, either with putting posts or a, or a board to close off those 10 amas. Let's say you have an opening in that board that's closing off the, the, the width of the mavoi because it's too wide, it's more than 10 amas. So if you have an opening in that board, in that, in that board it can only be up to four tvachim. However, if I have openings in a chatzar, then those openings could be up to ten amas. So what we're saying here is that there's a leniency in chatzar that doesn't that we don't have in, in a mavoi. Chatzar is the courtyard. Mavi is the alleyway, there's different ways of closing them off to be able to carry in Shabbos. So, so we don't have a Kalvachim now. Gemara answers, Kosava Rav Huna Bredi Rav Yeshua Mavi Nami Pitzasi Besser. You don't really have such an issue. You know why? Because, let's go through the names. This statement about a mavoi that's partially closed off with a board of four amas that requires another mavoi, that was Rami Bar Chama saying in the name of Rav Huna. Rav Huna is a student of Rav, and Rav Huna said the statement, and Rami Bar Chama said it over. Rami Bar Chama, just to put him into, pers into perspective of where, where he is, he was the husband of Rav Chista's daughter, the first one. And Rafa then married Rav Chizda's daughter after. He sang over in the name of Rav Huna. There is a, possibly a, um, a gap over there of a, a generation. Um, would have been, I don't know if Rav Chizda was the same age as Rav Huna. I think Rav Chizda was younger. Now, um, Rav Huna Breder of Yeshua is a much later, uh, much later on my, he's in the days of Rav Papa. He's a student of, of Rav, uh, like one generation down from Rami Barham. He's saying that if the whole Mavi is only seven Amas, the whole Mavi is only seven Amas wide, and the majority of that Mavi is filled up by a, by a wall of four Amas, so then you don't need another Lachi there. I know Rav Huna said you do, 
but that's because it was eight on this. But if it's seven on this, then the majority is filled up. I have another rule that I could apply, which is Amid Mirbala parts, the majority is closed off, and that's going to work. And he has a Kavachimer for it. So we said the Kavachimer doesn't work. So why doesn't the Kavachimer work? Because the Kavachimer was from Chatzar, and Chatzar has its own leniencies. You can't learn from Chatzar that Amid Mirbala parts works. So the way to resolve this issue, how does Rav Huna Breder be sure fit? He says that. I don't have to follow the, that problem that you just said about a chatzar, that a chatzar has its own leniencies. Actually, I hold that a mavoi and a chatzar have the same rule regarding the gap of, of, uh, of ten amas, or what we called before four tvachim. You said that a chatzar can be up to ten amas, and a mavoi is only four tvachim. That means a chatzar has its own leniencies. The truth is, that Rav Hunabri de Bishol holds that a Mavik, the gap could also be 10 Amas. We're talking about when you try to close up the wall, that you try to close up the opening from being more than 10 Amas with a wall. And in that wall, that new wall that you put there, you have a gap of 10 Amas as well. Rav Hunabri de Bishol holds that that's good enough. Let's see if there's a picture here just to clarify what we're talking about. Jump ahead, Let's see where it is. Ah, very good. If you notice this picture right here is um, here's the Mavoy. And it's covered with a cross beam along the entrance, which is up to 10 amas. But there's a gap over here of four tvachim. So we said that gap of four tvachim is a chumra and mavay that chatzar doesn't have. By a chatzar, this gap could be much larger. So Rav Huna Breder Yeshua holds that by mavay it could also be larger. So don't tell me that the kavachim doesn't work because chatzar is more lenient than mavay. The truth is mavay also has that leniency. So we're holding now, the Gemara has a question. Laman kam nina. You're saying that this is all Rav Huna Breder Rav Yeshua's opinion, that Mavai has the same leniency as Chatzah, that the gap on the side of the opening could be up to 10 Amis. Who's he, that, who's, who, you, who, who are you saying this for? You're saying this for a statement that was given by Rav Huna that a mavoi um, that has a wall in the front of four, of four amas. Uh, and you want to say that that wall needs another lechi. You want, because that wall is, is uh, the mavoi is divided into two. So you need a second lechi. But you don't need the second lechi if the whole mavoi is only seven amas wide. Who are you referring to? You're referring to Rav Huna. Let's see what Rav Huna's opinion is. Not Rav Huna, Brady, Rav Yeshua. Rav Huna himself, that early a Meira, that's a, a student of Rab. Baha Rav Huna, he holds that there is a difference between a Chatzar and a Mavi. He holds that the opening of the Chatzar is the gap in the wall could be up to 10 Amas, and in a Mavi it's only 4 Amas. Four tfachen. It's only 4 tfachen. That means that there's a difference between Chatzar and Mavi, and we don't have a Kavachimer. So Rav Huna's whole statement regarding when Rav Huna Breed, Rav Huna Breed, Rav Yeshua's whole statement regarding when Rav Huna would say his din, that it's only by eight amas and not by seven, by seven he would allow it. Um, we don't have a Kalvachimer now because Rav Huna holds that there's a difference between Chatz and Mavi. says, Rav Huna Breed, Rav Yeshua, time of the It's not a problem. It's not a problem. Rav Huna Breed, Rav Yeshua was not explaining Rav Huna. You know what? Rav Huna says this interesting halacha that if you have a mavoi, an alleyway that has a wall along part of it, along the entranceway a little bit, you need another um, lechi somewhere on that wall on one side or the other side, wherever you want to do it. Um, which, which opinion? 
Rav Huna actually holds that that would apply to a mope that's eight amas wide as well. But Rav Huna Yeshua holds differently. He holds that if it, it won't apply to seven. Why? Because Rav Huna Yeshua has a kalvachaimer. I know that Rav Huna wouldn't hold of that kalvachaimer because Chatzar is more lenient than mope. But Rav Huna Yeshua does have the kalvachaimer. That Chatzar is not more lenient than mope. And nevertheless, I'm in Mirbala parts works. So therefore, by Mavi, which is more lenient, for sure I'm in Mirbala parts works. Rabbanot, read was following his own opinion. Ravashi Amar, Ravashi comes along and adds, I feel the Mavi Let's say the Mavi is exactly eight Amas wide. Exactly. So, Ravuna Breed Yeshua holds, that if it would be seven amas, then you don't need another lefty. That wall that goes along four amas in the front, that would be good enough. So if it's exactly eight amas. So he says like this, nami you also don't need a lefty, why not? Manafshach. Either way you go, either way you look at it, it's gonna be fine. Now, the assumption here is that you can never really get it exact. It's like the kids fighting over the, who got the bigger piece of cake. You can never get, every way you look at it, it looks like this one's a little higher, but this one's a little more sideways. Whichever way you look at it, it you can never get it perfect. So, let's say it's not exact. So which one is more? If there's more wall, it's not the Baimid Nubal Aparats. Kuna Breed of Yeshua told us, if there's more wall, then we have a special uh, rule. I made Mirabala Paritz. More wall closes it off. So it should work. Be Paritz Nafesh. But let's say there's more opening. Why is there more opening? Because the wall that you put in the front, that what they call Lechi, Habaylet, Midafani Shamavi, that wall that's blocking part of the entrance, that's really only 3.9. It's not really four. 3.9. So then it doesn't divide the mavi into two mavis. Then that 3.9 is already a lechi. We learned that before. 3.9 would have worked. So if that wall is 4.1, then it's aimed mirbala parats. We don't, it's not that the point one is the lechi. We have a new halacha, aimed mirbala parats. If it's 3.9, then that wall is a lechi. Okay, so either way, it's going to be mutter. So, the part it's not need to be some lechi, then it's going to be fine. Where it says, Maya Amrit, what, a, what, what could you tell me? That it's exactly equal. Okay, have a lay suffix devreim. So you have a suffix, you have a doubt. The suffix devreim local, if there's a doubt, you go lenient. Okay, He's ignor- the, the Gemara is ignoring one basic question. Basic question is, let's say when you measured the Mavi that it's eight, it wasn't exactly eight, could be the <laughs> I mean, the Mavi is more than eight, we ignored that. We said the Mavi is exact. The Shaila is that wall that's boiled, that wall that's sticking out. That's for sure not exact. Um, so for sure not exact, so it's either more, okay, then we don't need anything, I mean, but okay, it's less, so then, then, uh, then it works as a lechi. But what about if the alleyway itself is not perfectly eight? So that's the Ritva's question. He says that the Gemara is answering that as well when it says, okay, Safik Divrayim. You're not saying for sure, you're making it into a Safik. The Safik Divrayim will also be lenient. It's called Safik Divrayim and Lakula. A leniency about a rabbinic decree. We go, we're, uh, a, a doubt about a, a rabbinic decree, we go, we're lenient. Why is this rabbinic? Because this is not considered a Rishas Arab. It's really, Minatar, it's considered a Rishas Ayachid. You have three walls surrounding a, an area. I know a lot of people can use it. Anyone that lives in that, in those surrounding areas. But it's not a public area, and it's a Rishas Ayachid. And the rabbis made a decree that in order so you don't end up carrying from that area, which could have a lot of people carrying out into the Rishas Arab, and they have a decree that you need to put a post there. To, to show that, but that's rabbinic. Now, if 
there's a doubt about whether I need it, so you could be lenient and say that it's already been satisfied. Amar Take a look at a picture that will explain it clearer. Oh, it's giving us the answer already. Go back. We had a Gemara like this earlier. Okay. If you see this picture over here, here I have a Mavi. Okay, the top. Um, there's a, a cross beam going across. That's called Reishai. This is the, uh, the opening to the Mavi. Sida is the side of the Mavi. Here, you see where that little base is, there's a gap in the wall. So, Rav Chanan Barava says that that gap could be up to 10 Amas, including 10 Amas, that gap on the side. However, the Gemara goes on and says, but if the gap is on the front, then it can only be four, four Amas. What do you mean the gap on the front? The gap on the front, the whole thing is open. The whole thing is one big gap. So, Here's the picture of Mireshe, and this is explaining it according to the way Rashi explains that the opening at the front was way too long for it to be permitted with a kaira. It's a very wide alley, and an alley is only permitted if it's 10 amas. This is more than 10 amas. So in order to, to permit this, we had to put up a partition here, a wall, to close off and leave an opening of 10 amas. Now, if the, uh, there's a gap in this wall, so that could only be Dalit Tfachim, the fourth Tfachim. So we have a difference between the side wall and the front wall. The side wall could be ten Amas, according to Rav Hanan Bar Rava Amar Rav, it's in the name of Rav, very early Amar Rav. Um, a difference between the side wall and the front wall. Umara asks, why do you say 10 amas is considered okay if it's on the side wall? Why, why, why 10 amas is okay? It's because it's, an, it's a door. You're allowed to, you don't have to close things off in, entirely that you have to jump over the fence to get in. You, there's allowed to be doorways. So up to 10 amas is considered a doorway. So I have, I have two doorways. I have the one that's covered by the kaira, and I have another doorway, it should be fine. Set it on the side, that uh, you can have a doorway up to 10 amas. So why can't you have a second doorway on the front, two doors? Amar of Huna Breder of Yeshua, we just had them uh, a minute ago. He says, Kigen Shinifritz Bekeren Zavis. Pischa Bekeren Zavis Layab Yenshi. He says, you know what, you're right. If the doorway is on the front, you're right. It's fine, it could go up to 10 amas. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about that the opening at the front, that gap was really on the corner. And people don't make doorways on the corner. Because they don't break a, two walls, part of this wall, part of that wall, with the corner to make a doorway. Now, I know what you're thinking. We had before. I think I know what you're thinking. <laughs> We had before that um, we did say a doorway on the corner. We had this whole problem: how do you fit a doorway of a chutzer into a four um, into a four tefach mavoi? We said we did it on the corner. We did it a, a diagonal. It went through the corner. That's exactly what I. That's exactly what uh, I'm saying. <laughs> Taisa says okay, that. Look at the, I'm sorry. I said yitz. Take the day off. <laughs> So, which um, taste was the Pisca Bekaren Savas Layab the Inchi? Taisus over there says that, Taisus says that what we're dealing with over there was that you made a Tsura Sapesach. You made a door frame that went diagonal. Here we're talking about that you didn't make a door frame. If you made a door frame, then yeah, it becomes a doorway, even though you went over a corner. But if without a door frame, then we say that's not a doorway. 
You say that's a breach in the wall, it's not considered a doorway. In Fort Tvachim, there's the breach. So it's a special case. We are, we don't say that that could be considered a doorway. Let's take a look at the picture. And that's what we're looking at, that picture over there, number 39. It took off the corner. Okay. So now we say like this. Rav Huna, Amar, Rav Huna argues with Rav Chalam Barav. If you remember, Rav Huna was a student of Rav, and Rav Chalam Barav is a student of Rav. I think Rav Chalam Barav is actually a son-in-law of Rav as well. And I believe that he's the father-in-law of Rav Chizda. And in some places, it's Rav Anan Barav. Here it's Rav Chalam Barav. So we have Rav son-in-law and Rav student that are arguing, I think. I think that's what it is. So Rav Huna says, whether the gap is on the side wall or whether the gap is on the front. On the front would mean Karen Zavis. Corner. Let's see if there's an opening, another opening on the front that's dynamic, so I'm not sure. He says that, uh, that it's always four. It's always four. We never have this leniency of, of, um, of ten amas. We'll see how this works. And Rav Huna actually says to Rav Hanam Barava, like don't argue with me about this. I know I'm right. Why? They're both students of Rav. He says, the Rav the Macharia. Rav came to this place called Macharia. Rav of the Kavasi, a paskin like me. I know that I'm right. I saw this. Rav made, made this psak. Well, Rav Hanan Barava says, responds to Mamale, Rav Biko Matza, Biko Matza, the God of Bagheda. Rav found a, um, an opening and he decided to make a fence. Found an open area, decided to make a fence. What that means is that, uh, don't bring me a proof from that case, from what Rav did. Rav saw that people were being very lenient and he decided to make a stringency on them. Sometimes this happens where um, things are getting out of hand. So the rabbi says, no, you can't do it. And then everyone starts saying, what are you talking about? It says in Shulchan Aruch, this and that. And, uh, and they're right, it says in Shulchan Aruch. But the rabbi saw that if you're going to just do what it says in Shulchan Aruch, everyone is being lenient. So Rav saw, even though, even though Rav Hanan Barav says that the opening could have been 10 amas, but Rav saw that these people being very lenient, he said the opening can only be four tvachim. But you're arguing with me about the halacha, I'm telling you that the halacha is that uh, it could be four tvachim. It could be 10 amas, up to 10 amas, which is more lenient. I'm Rav Nachim Bar Yitzchak. Nachim Bar Yitzchak says, Kavasei Dei Ravuna Mestaber. Nachim Bar Yitzchak is later. I think in the time of Rav, or a student of Rav. Is it? No, it's in the time of Rav. He's a student of Rav Nachman, I think. I think Rav Nachman is the teacher of Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak. <coughs> Mestabra, that it make, Kavasei Dei Ravuna Mestaber. It makes sense like, like Rav Huna. The itmar, because there's a statement, we're going to learn a new piece here, and then it's going to go back and explain why, why it would fit with Rav Huna. Um, it goes like this, Mavi Akam. Now, there's a picture on the side in the Rashi. Let me just show it to you. Let's look at it all together. Whoops. Let me share the screen. Mavi Akam. It's a bent Mavi. There you go. There is, there's the picture. Give you the, the aerial view. So you, um, uh, here's the Rosh Hashanah This is a public area, another public area. And this Mavi, that you can walk in there and then you turn there. Now, this could be called a Mavi Mafolish. Mavi Mafolish means it's open at both ends. So here's a case of a Mavi Mafolish, where you have a street here, a highway here, let's say, a highway here, then there's an alleyway that goes straight in between. 
So, Mavi Mephulish has special halachas. You can't just put a crossbeam on one side or in a crossbeam on the other. You have to sort of close off one wall. We'll see how to do that, but it's, it's, not, um, it's not just with the crossbeam. A Mavi Sasum, a closed Mavi, that means it's closed on one end. So, that, that's the Mavi that we've been learning about the whole time. It's like a mummy here. There's no, you can't walk through. There's a back, there's another courtyard. So over there, you can use a kaira. So what's going to be with this? Is this considered that it's closed? Because if you try to walk straight, you, you bang into a wall. Or is it considered open? Because really, you just walk straight through. Let's see. So it says like this. Mava yoka. Rav says, it's considered open. Now, what do you have to do if it's open? What do you do? So Rashi over here says that in the corner, you're going to put a Tzuras of Pesach, and then you're going to put a Lechi on each end. Let's see if he made a picture of that. That would be easier for us. Ah, very good. Here we have it. We have a tzuras of Pesach in the corner. Tzuras of Pesach means a door frame. And at each end, you put a lechi. That way, it's really two mavis. We, we're looking at it as two mavis that are both open. So how do you close off a mavi that's open? You put a tzuras of Pesach at the end. So two separate mavis. We put a tzuras of Pesach at. We only need one tzuras of Pesach for both of these mavis. And then you have each Mavi Sasam has its own Lachi. And Shmuel Amar Terasu Kusasam, Shmuel says it's considered closed. We have the picture right here where you don't need anything in the inside. This is according to Rashi's own chat. However, Rashi brings um, Terasu, uh, Rashi brings Zekib Baltimi Maria Zakin. He brings his, his teacher's chat. We are, if you look over here, this picture, that you need one more Lachi. To Rashi's teachers. Okay, let's keep, stick with the with Rashi's pshat. That uh, according to Shmuel, it's considered mafulish. It's considered sasam. It's considered closed, and you only need a lechi on each end. Bimayaskina. What's the case? How wide is the mavoi in the center in the corner? If you say that the center of it is wide, more wide than ten. Hamas, Holim Shmuel Terasu Kusasim. Shmuel says that that bend in the Mavoi is considered like closed. It's very wide. Look, a highway or a street turns. It's not like you, you can see from one end of the highway to the other end. It turns. It turns around different things that are there, whatever it is. So there's water, or hills, or something. The highway is going to turn. So but it's still considered a, a, a highway. Now here we have a mavi. So the fact that it turns shouldn't, shouldn't do anything to it if it's very wide by the turn. It's still, just, it's still, it's still, it's still wide. So Shmuel, they have machlekes Rav and Shmuel. We have to be able to make it logical for both Rav and Shmuel to have their opinions. If it's more than 10, then Shmuel's opinion becomes illogical. So it has to be El Alav Be'aser. It has to be that it's 10. That when we say 10, 10 amas, we mean that it's within four tvachim to 10 amas. Okay. Now it could fit with Shmuel. Shmuel says, well, it's considered like it's closed. And it's considered like a mavi sasim. You only need a wall on each side. A, a, a lechi on each corner. The Ka'ama Rav, if that's the case, and comes along Rav and says, Terasi kimafulish. Rav holds that it's considered open. What's considered open? A breach from four tvachim to ten amas is considered open. Alma pirtus mavi mitzide bedalid. What's really going on over here? We have a breach in the side wall of a mavi. Let's take a look at the picture. The side wall of the mavi. Let's see if he spells it out. Going too far. Oops. 
if you take this over here, ignore, ignore this whole corner business. Let's say there was a Rosh Hashanah that went straight along right here, right? There would be a breach on the side wall of a mother. That will, that, how big would that, could, could that breach be? It could only be a, uh, under four tvachim. If it's more than four, four tvachim, then Rav holds it's considered open. Now that I don't have a, uh, I don't have a, a wall right there. This is a, a whole new, I don't know, courtyard or something that's, that's over there. So, and I have to extend it because it's as if a second mavi is there. Or there is a second mavi. It's only going to get more lenient. But nevertheless, Rob says that it's considered totally open. Why? Because it's Fort Tvachim. That means that a breach the size of Fort Tvachim is considered a breach. It's a raya to Rav Huna. That's what we wanted to bring out. See, Rav Hanan Barava would say a breach on the side could be 10 Amis. Rav Huna says it can only be Fort Tvachim. See, Rav holds that it's only Fort Tvachim. And this is Rav. Everyone is saying in the name of Rav. This is a raya to Rav Huna. What does Rav, Rav Hanan Barava respond? Rav Hanan Barava, he responds like this. So Shani Hassam, that case is different. The Kabaki Barabim, oh, that's a special mava. Over there, there's a lot of people going through it. That's a more busy mava. It's a busy mava, so it's considered, uh, it's, it's, uh, considered open. What does that mean? What does that mean? That when does he say that, when does Rav Hanan Barava say that it could be open 10 Amas, according to Rav, when it's not a busy mother? So he just made a distinction here between his first statement and, and what's going on here. His first statement was that uh, the opening on the side could be 10 Amas. He's explaining that's because it wasn't a busy mother. But by a busy mother, you're right, it's only for Tvachim. Michlal, but that implies that Rav Huna would hold back in this first statement of Rav Hanan Barava, where Rav Hanan Barava said that by an, by, that it could be ten amas, that we just explained that that's because it wasn't busy. That means that Rav Huna holds, even if it's not busy, it could only be for Tvachim. That was the Machlekes. Ten amas and four Tvachim. In which case is that Machlekes? When it's not busy. When it is busy, everyone agrees that it can only be for Tvachim. It's not busy. It's a machlekes Rav Hanan Barava and Rav Huna. If it could be ten amas. If that's the case, that even Rav, that that even if it's not busy, Rav Huna would hold that it can only be for Tvachim. Maishna midir Rabami Barabasi. We had before. Statement of Rabbi Ami That wall said, let's go back to that. Oops. It's the first picture that we did today. This wall here, Rabbi Ami and Rabbi said that that breach, that gap in the wall, could be up to 10 Amis. Now, according to, uh, is it the, he, he, they said, as long as this wall here is Fort Tvachim, as long as this wall here is Fort Tvachim, then, then the, the gap could be up to 10 Amis. I mean, it's in the side. The problem is, is that we don't really have a case for Rav Huna for that to fit. Because Rav Huna holds, if the public is using that, it's, it's, a, it's a busy um, area. So then, if a sure can only be for, for Tvachim. If it's not a busy area, it's also only for Tvachim. So when does it have, when could Tanamas work? So the Gemara answers, Hasam We have a third uh, criteria. The third criteria, let's see if we can get a picture of that. It's where there are stumps on the floor. See, there's still a base 
Over there, it could be up to 10 amas because the stumps are still there. The, the, the stump of the wall is still there. Comes out, we have three, um, three criteria. The first criteria is Baki Barabim. There's a majority. There's a, uh, not a majority. There's a, uh, it's a busy area. So then everyone holds that it's only Dalatva. Even um, Rav Khanam Barabba. Then we have Loi Baki Barabim. You don't have a lot of people using it. That's exactly where the Machlekes is. Rav Hanan Barava says that it's Tanamis, and Rav Huna says it's only Dalat Vachim. It can only be Dalat Vachim. And then you have Gedude, where you have the stumps there that we said it could be, everyone would agree, even Rav Huna, that it would, even Rav Huna, that it would, could be up to Tanamis, because you have the, the, the base of the wall is still there. Okay, the following Gemara um, would have been better if it would have been the beginning of the Masechta. Sometimes the Gemara does this. Gemara really, it starts off the Masech, it, it threw us in in the deep end. Now we're coming to like this uh, flat area. This is a very introductory piece. This, this, um, Gemara Shabbos does the same thing, I think, on that love. It says, Dalad uh, Rishiyas, in this for, you're learning all about carrying. This one's inside that, you know, it's, uh, in that love, I think it comes along and says, no, let, let's go back. So it does it over here as well. We have this Tanar Rabbanan that sort of tells us how does Erevin work? What's going on over here? Very, very Yisaitistic, uh, fundamental for understanding a city Erev and how that works. Tanar Rabbanan was taught in a brisa. Ketan Marvin Derech Rishus How do you make an Erev on a, a road, over a road that's a Rishus So, Very important Rashi here that I have to learn it inside. Uh, usually we don't do the Rashi's inside. But this is so, so, so huge that uh, um, Rashi is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It starts eight lines up, then the line of Shasarabu. Mashma Rachav Sheshasriyama. It has to be wide, 16 Amas, when we're talking about Shasarabu. Now, here's the big point, which becomes the huge machlaikas. The Ir Shemitsuyim Bashishim Ribik, the city needs to have 600,000 people. But the other Rishayim don't hold of this. This is Rashi's opinion. Rashi holds that Rosh Hashanah needs to have 600,000 people in the city. Shulchan Aruch quotes this Rashi, quotes this, and says that it needs to have 600,000 people every single day. Doesn't mean it's using the road. But the Mishabura writes on this that he looked through the Rishonim and he never saw which, which Rishonim say B'chol Yain. He says, Ve'in B'chayma, it's not surrounded by a wall. And, Sh'ayur Shusrab M'chubam L'Shal L'Shar, Sh'ayim M'chul L'Shlem L'Dikim Midbar. And the street goes straight through from, from side to side. It means, it's one uh, straight road that goes through the city. That's considered Rosh Hashanah. Okay. Um, if a Rosh Hashanah is according to Rashi, we need to have 600,000 people, then we're going to find out soon that there's a problem to make an to make an eruv over an actual rishus sarabim is much more complicated than over uh, an area that's not a real rishus sarabim. So let's take North Miami Beach. Um, according to Rashi, it's not a real rishus sarabim. We have a lot of leniencies. We can use things that would be similar to permitting mavo or other things. To permit rishus sarabim is going to be very strict. But according to those other rishonim that say that, um, let's say that it's a Rosh Hashanah already, even without 600,000 people, just because the street is 16 Amas, then we have some, uh, then we have some stringencies over here as well. Okay. Um, let's see further. 
what, how do you do it with the Rosh Hashanah? It says, First opinion, the Tanakhama says, how do you make an Erev over Rosh Hashanah? You put a door frame on one end, and you put a lechi, which is a post, and a cross beam on the other end. Hanani Yoimer, Hanani says, Hanani says it's machlikas, Bishami and Bisil. We had Hanani, um, the third parak of Mesech the Shabbos, is last, remember? And in Aftali, in Tira, about Bishel. So Hanani says, Bishami Yoimer, Mesech Delas Mikan, Vedelas Mikan, that you have to put a doorway. No, I'm sorry, not a doorway, a door on each end. You have to close the door. You have to have closed doors. To, if you want to close off a Rosh Hashanah, put doors on and close them. Yisrael says you need a door on one end and a lachir kair on the other end. One side needs to be closed. It doesn't say closed. One side needs a door. One side needs a door. Does it need a tzuras of Pesach? It's machlek sachreinu. You can have a door without a tzuras of Pesach. Chazanish says it needs a tzuras of Pesach as well. And other Achrein say no. A door is enough. A tourist pesach means a frame. It has a beam going over. Okay. The Gemara asks right away on this price. Are you able to make an Erev over Rishus Arabim? The whole concept of Erev was something else. It wasn't the Erev was that you have a, an area that's really... Um, uh, it could be a, considered a private area, I mean, you put an Erev up and it makes it like it really is, even rabbinically. But now you're closing off for Rosh how does that work? But Tanya, but we have a Bryce that says like this, Yes, Sir Al-Kain. Okay, this was talking about, we learned this in Shabbos, where if someone has uh, two houses on both sides of the street, and he makes an overpass, we have in the airports to get from the parking lot to the, uh, to the airport, he makes like a walkway over. So under that walkway, it's going across the street. Is that considered a Rosh or Rosh Hashanah? So Rabbi Yehuda held that that's considered Rosh Hashanah. He holds that the edges of that walkway um, can close down and it's considered like it's closed off. And like that area is considered Rosh Hashanah. Yes, so can I'm Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says even more than that. This is Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Lai, he's a, a Tana, a student of Rabbi Yehuda. He says, He's even more lenient than that, what we just said. He said, if you have two houses on both sides of the street, you don't even need to have a full overpass that's going over. Just put a cross beam across the street. Uh, on one side, at one edge of that two houses, and then another one on the other edge, or you just have to put a lechi on one uh, a post on both uh, edges of the house, and it's considered a rishis yachid. You can carry in the middle. Amrulai, the sages said to Rabbi Yehuda, "Ain marvim rishis rabim mekach. You can't, you can't make an eruv in rishis rabim like that." So Gemara says, "See." Can't make an air of in Rosh Hashanah. The Gemara says right away, Maybe you can't make an air with just the lechi or a kaira. Maybe that's not enough, but they hold that you can make an air of if you do it differently. But if you would put actual doors that you would open, but you put doors there, then maybe it would work. Rabbi Barbachana says the name of Rabbi Yechana. He lived in Tveria. But he's talking about Yerushalayim that had a wall. Um, I don't know if the wall of Yerushalayim now is back then. Probably the wall now is from the Crusaders. I don't know. Whatever the case is, there's a wall. There was a wall of Yerush- around Yerushalayim, and um, whichever wall it was. And he says that even though there's a wall, but you would need to close the doors at night. There were many doors. 
many doors, many, many opening. How many gates are there to Yerushalayim now? Are there four gates? I thought there's six. Seven. Oh, yeah. So you have to close the doors at night. If you don't close the doors at night, then even though it has doors, but the doors aren't enough. You see? A Yerushalayim doesn't help to have doors. You have to mamish close the doors. That's what we're seeing over here. Chayav alam mishum Yerushalayim. You have to close the doors. It's a Tzuras Pesach as well. Doors with the Tzuras Pesach. Right? As you walk through the gates, that's a Tzuras Pesach. Um, Did they have Tzuras Pesach? Because some of them are these Archway. That's good. Yeah, an archway is good. An archway uh, is good. An archway is a tzuras of uh-huh. So, why? You see, this is sort of what we're dealing with. Um, we're trying to create partitions, halachic partitions. The problem with halachic partitions is that when the public walks through the halachic partition, they, they, um, they're mevatel it. You say, um, it, it, you say something is really closed off halachically. That's great. But then you see everyone walking through it. So it's not really a wall. It's called rab mevatel mechitzas. The, the public annuls that, that uh, fictitious wall. So you're trying to say that this is totally blocked off, that this is considered a wall, it's Rosh Pesach or whatever. It turns out, that because the public are walking through, it's not considered a wall. And unless you close the gates, it's not considered a, an Arab. You're trying to, to allow an Arab with one doorway, with one door, and then it's a surpass, and then a, a lechi or kaira at the other end. You're seeing over here that uh, it doesn't work. Your shalayim, it didn't work like that. But Amr Ula, Ula says, Hani avuli de mechuza. The gates of mechuza. If not for the doorways that would get closed of Mechuza, then it would be considered uh, it would be considered Shisarabim. Okay, so what are we saying over here? This is taking us back to our question. What are we saying that you can close off a Rosh Hashanah and you can make an Erev there? Here we're saying that the Rosh Hashanah, a real Rosh Hashanah, you can't make an Erev. Amar said, well, if, unless you close off the whole thing, the doors that are closed. Amar Avuna, Amar, I'm sorry, Amar Rav Yehuda Hachikamar. Rav Yehuda says, let me tell you what the Brisa was really saying. Ketan Marvin, Mavoy Yisam of Halashin. How do you make an Erev through of an amavi that's mafulish, like we showed those pictures that you have a on both ends, and in the center is a mavi, but it goes through. It's, uh, you go from one end to the other without any uh, curves or anything. Mavi mafulish. How do you learn shusarabim? It's open both ends to shusarabim. So then, what do you do? You just have to make a uh, tzuras pesach on one side and a lechin kair on the other side. Okay. Rosh Hashanah and Mamish is not going to work. You need doors. It's not a Rosh Hashanah and Mamish, then you can use it's Rosh Hashanah. Okay. Itmar, we have a statement from Amiroy. Rav Amir Hilchasa Ketanakama. Rav says that the Allah is like the Tanakama. Tanakama said that you have. It's Rosh Pesach on one side, and Alachi or a Kaira, it says Vikaira, but it's translating as Oikaira, or a Kaira on the other side of this Mavi Mafolish. And Shmuel Amar Halachi Kechananya. Shmuel says Halach is like Chananya. Chananya said that there's a Machlekes Beishama in Beisel. According to Beishama, you needed the door on each end, you need to be closed. Beisel said you needed only one door, and the other side could be Alachi or Kaira. So Shmuel is stricter. Shmuel says, he passes like Hananya. Ibailo. Where is the question? Hananya libid Basil Tsarach Linol or Ain Tsarach Linol. Basil didn't tell us 
if you need to close the door. Gemara is asking, do you need to close the door? It's interesting, Gemara here, because we passkin like Rav, that you only need a Tzuras of Pesach. The Gemara is creating a discussion and an opinion that we don't actually passkin like, which is, according to Hananya, which is like a theoretical question, Usually the Gemara uh, elaborates on the opinion that's, that, that we're accepting. Maybe there's an afternoon. Maybe we're trying to figure out, a, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so that's the Gemara's question. Tashima, come and listen. Dhamma Rabbi Yudha Mashmol in a Tzarechlinah. Rav Yudha says in the name of Shmuel that you don't have to close the door. You don't have to close the door. It's considered closed off even without closing the door. Now, some say that Rav Masna didn't say this just in the name of Shmuel, but he actually had a story where he says, I had this uh, event, um, a scenario, and Shmuel told Shmuel Paskin for me. It's, it's interesting, we have the same Gemara in Musaf where we have a statement from Rav Masna in the name of Shmuel. And then we have this Ikad Amri, it's something about Tzitzis. Um, if Tzitzis, uh, if the knots were made before it was severed, I think, somehow you made knots and it was still attached to the other end. It was, <laughs> I think you did two corners somehow at the same time and then you cut it afterwards. Something like that. Oh, what happened over there, I think, was was that you um, you didn't cut it. The, you didn't cut it into eight strings. You took one long string and put it back and forth, and then you used the end the end string to tie all the knots, and then and then you cut it afterwards. I think that was the case. I don't remember, but anyway, it's exactly the same setup where you have. Um, Rav Masna, and then you have a Bedidi Aviyovta. That's how the story was. If you buy me name Rav Anam, they asked Rav Anam, Tzarech Linol, Ayin Tzarech Linol. Do you have to close the door or not? Amaluhu, Tachazi. Just come and see. Sounds like he's in Eretz Yisrael. Right? Hani Avuli de Naradai. Guess not. It's in Naradai. In the Yerushalmi, it uses a Tachazi. Or in the Zayar, it uses a Tachazi. Um... But he says, come and look. The gates of Nardoi, the Timon al Palgaya Ba'afra, they're sunken into the dirt, halfway, halfway is sunken into dirt. You see, it can't even close if you wanted it to close. And nevertheless, Shmuel carries. So you see, Shmuel, that he held that, uh, like Hananya, that there has to be a door. Obviously, it doesn't need to close. Amar of Kana, Hanach Megufus Havai, don't bring a raya from there. Those doors are partially closed anyway. Okay. Kiyasar of Nachman, when Rav Nachman came to Nardai, Amar, he said, take away the dirt. I think historically what happened was that Shmuel had, Shmuel passed away, the yeshiva Nardai closed. And because uh, because Nardoi was attacked by this group, and um, everyone moved away. They moved to Pumpadisa together with Rav Yehuda. Rav Yehuda started the yeshiva in Pumpadisa. And um, Rav Nachman, Nardoi uh, uh, came back. Rav Nachman opened, uh, moved back to Nardoi. So he moves to Nardoi. He says to, to clear away the dirt from the doors so that they should be able to be closed. Is that that's a uh, Breslov of Nachman? Um, no, the, the Nachman someone else. Like, someone else, right? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, he was in. Not, um, but not the time. Like two hundred years okay. ago. I understand. Sorry. This, Sorry. This is much Thank earlier. You. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Was, um, I I got it. I got it. I understand. Seventeen. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. We're reading the. 
old, uh, sorry, they're even old. So. Shall we say that Reb Nachman holds because he said to clear the dirt away from the door that you have to actually um, close the doors? It says lie. That's not a. It's not a proof. Even though it's uh, just it's just a, it's it's enough that you're able to close it, that um, but you don't have to actually close it. Interesting. This gets quoted in Alacha. But you don't have to actually close it. This must be, this is quoted in Alacha because if you would, we said that you could use it to a Pesach for a regular city area. But let's say you wanted to do an Erev around a, a Rosh Hashanah Then you would need losses. So those losses, you have to close the doors. So they have to be able to be closed. That's what would come out. That's why this would be relevant. Okay. Now, we had a Mavayakam once before, and that was like an L shape. Now we're talking about a Mavayakam that's a Ches shape. So, let's just do a visual. It's showing us Yerachusha Sarabim, doors. Oh, you see, Abi, there's, a, there's the archway. Too far. No, let's go forward. No, I don't have a picture. Uh, going ahead. Okay, so it's an it's a uh, it's a ches shape, and if you look in your Rashi on the side, uh, you see that there's a ches there, and. We'll see what the halacha is with that one. We said before by a mavayakum yada machlekes rab and shmuel, we are shmuel held that it was considered closed, and rab held that it was open. It's going to be over here. You have a mavayakum in my day. Rami ola chumrei chumrei the rab chumrei the shmuel. We have a we put on it the chumra of rab and the chumra of shmuel. The chumra of rab. Is that it's considered open. It's considered that it's open on both sides. So I'm going to need a tzuras of Pesach somewhere. The Chumrah of Shmuel, the Shmuel says that I don't paskin like the Tanakama, I paskin like Hananya, which means I need doors. So we consider it open according to Rav, and how do you resolve it when it's open? We go like Shmuel. They went like Shmuel that says that you need doors. Okay. But Sakhud losses and they require doorways. They the stringency of Rav is because it's considered open, even though it turns, but so what? It's considered like it goes straight through. And Khumre the Rav Dhamma Terasi Kimafulish. Khumid the Shmuel. Okay, it's considered uh, open. Are you going to say that if you follow Rav, that you only need a Tzuras of Pesach? We're going to go, we have the stringency of Shmuel that says that Allah is like Hananya. It says that you need doors. But according to Shmuel, what's the problem? He holds that it's closed off. Well, Karav, Dharma Tarasa, Kim We'll follow Rav that says that it's open. The 
Gemara asks, Miyadina, Shechomri, you take two stringencies. Let's learn a little bit of the Gemara and then we'll discuss Taisu's comment. But Tanya, but we have a Bryce that says, Loyla Malacha Kveisilel. Allah is always like Beis Elba, right? But if you want to follow Beis Shama, you could, you could follow Beis Shama. If you want to follow Beis you could follow. If you want to take the leniencies of Beis Shama, which is not so common. And you want to take the leniencies of Beis which is more common. You're just going to take all the leniencies from every, from every uh, rabbi. So that's Russia. That's a wicked person. If you want to take the stringencies of every rabbi, Beis Shama, the stringencies of Beis the fool walks in the darkness. So, what does it say? If you're going to follow then you follow the leniencies and the stringencies. If you want to follow you have to take, take it's a package deal. Take the whole thing. The Gemara says, but one second. You have a problem with, the, with this price. Why? You started off saying that Allah is like Beisil. That's the rule. Then you say, if you want to follow Beisham, you can. It doesn't fit. It's not the Allah. My answer is like Kasha. This Raisa was composed in two stages, historically. The second part of the Raisa was composed first. The second part of the Raisa says that you can follow whichever opinion you want. That was before the Basco, before the heavenly voice came out that said that, that the Allah is like Beisil. Yushalmi and Bracha says that the heavenly voice came out when they were in Yavna. It tells us historically when that took place. It was right after the destruction of the temple. So, and after the Basco, after the heavenly voice came out that said who the Allah is like, so then we pass in like, uh, and you don't have the option anymore. Okay, let's go back for one second. And We're based on a basco, isn't that the whole idea? Yeah, it's a problem. It's a problem. I will get to that in a second. I'll show you. The first thing is, Taisus asks in me of Dina Katre Khumri. What's the problem? You want to be strict. What's the problem? You take this stringency, you don't know. So you take this stringency, you take that stringency. It sounds like it's acceptable. Tysus explains that what we're dealing with right here is that Mimanavshach, a Tsurasa Pesach, should work. Let's say I put a Tsurasa Pesach, a door frame, on this Mavayakum. So let's say I follow Rav. Rav holds that it's open. So it's okay. So you satisfied Rav's opinion, you put it to Rasa Pesach. Let's say I follow Shmuel that holds that you don't even need a to Rasa Pesach because it's considered closed. So for sure the to Rasa Pesach works. So I mean, of Shach the Rasa Pesach. What they did is they put a door on it. So the Gemara is asking, if the Tzuras of Pesach works for according to both opinions, I mean, of Shach, so then why, why, why should you be using the door? The door is, Shmuel doesn't hold that you need the door, and Rav doesn't hold that you need the door. So that's what the Gemara is really asking here. Okay, now the Neil's question is the bottom Tzuras. Tzuras has the, is pretty similar. Every place where this Basco was mentioned, Tzuras shows up and, um, it says, one second. We had a Baskal somewhere else in history. It came out and it said, the Allah is like Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkinus by the Tanner Achnai. Where Rabbi Eliezer said that this type of oven is tar, and the Chacham said that it's tame. And uh, to prove that it's tar, Rabbi Eliezer invoked the Baskal to come and say that Allah is like him. And Rabbi Yeshua said, don't follow the Baskal. So the Allah is not, the Torah is not in heaven. We don't follow a Baskal. And over here, you're telling me that the Baskal tells us uh, how we're supposed to, heaven tells us how we're supposed to rule. So Taisu says that over there, the Baskal was going against the Rabbin, against the majority. Over here, the Baskal is going together with the Rabbin. Oh, so then why do I need a Baskal? You have the rabbin. 
drop the baskal and you have the majority. He says, no, this majority wasn't perfect because Beishamai was sharper. You have a lot of people that are saying something, it doesn't mean that they're right. Just because there's a lot of people, the Beishamai was much sharper than Basil. So we have a baskal that says that, no, you're gonna follow the, the Basil. So here, and it's a different baskal, it's a different, uh, has a different uh, strength because it wasn't going, it, it wasn't determining the halacha the way that it would be determining if it would be going against the public. I have the support of the public here, of the, of the majority. It was just telling me that in this case, you also follow the majority. Okay, that's our first answer. Rebbe Yusema, another answer we could give is Hava Halacha Baskel. Rabbi Smith, how do you yeah. get a Baskel to talk uh, on your behalf? Just, I'm just wondering if, if that's accessible. Yeah. You ask your daughter. <laughs> a baskel, right? So, Hava Halacha Baskel. Both of them are after, are after the Baskel. And there's a machlekes. If Rabbi Yeshua, and it's the opinion of Rabbi Yeshua, that he holds the leimashkach b'baskel. It says that you don't follow the baskel. The iba you that you don't follow the baskel, and that's why you're able to say you're able to say that you can follow b'shamay. Can you imagine Rabbi Yeshua is the one that's allowing you more to follow b'shamay? Okay. Um, now we have Yibayi Seim Hachi Kamer Kol Hesha the Meshkacha Straight Tanoi of Tzri Amarai the Pligi Adadi Ke En Machlekes Beisham Beisil Lei Leab Ki Kule Demar Ki Kule Demar Lei Ki Chumri Demar Ki Chumri Demar Ela Oiki Kule Demar Chumri Avid Oiki Kule Demar Ki Chumri Avid He says doesn't mean a Machlekes Beisham Beisil That's just an example of a Machlekes But really this would apply to anyone Any Machlekes would be You're right Beisham Beisil You can't follow Beisham But in other Machlekes in then you have to pick the uh, the one. Let me just do one step further. kasha. So why didn't our day do this? Why did they say that you have to put doors on a on a on an alleyway that really didn't require doors unless you take everyone's chumah? So Zomer Rav Nachman Yitzchak Kula Karav Avdu. You're really passing like Rav. Zomer Rav Huna Marav Halachavim Kmerin Kain. This that Rav held. That you don't need to put doors, it's sort of festival is enough. He said that, but he said you shouldn't pass him like that in public. What about Ravada Barava that holds that you even pass him like that in public? Let's leave it over here. We'll go we'll start again from Ravada Barava. <laughs> 